A well-rounded habitat management plan isn't complete without supplementing your deer with the minerals they require. Lactating does and antler building bucks benefit significantly when mineral sites are available on your property. In this episode, we're going to talk about why deer need mineral, proper site selection, establishing and maintaining a mineral site, as well as taking a look at what types are on the market today. It's an important topic, so stay with us. Supplemental mineral sites are such an important component when we talk about managing whitetail habitat. In fact, you could almost say it's just as important as food plots are, if not more, when it comes to getting nutrients and minerals to your deer. So first, let's talk about why minerals are so important. A balanced, mineral-laden diet enables pregnant does to produce far more nutrient-rich milk for their fawns and healthy lactation is critical to fawn growth. When we talk about bucks, we immediately think of antlers, which in their purest form are comprised of about 55% mineral. Naturally then, minerals play a huge role in building antlers to their fullest potential. The minerals that a buck takes in from the ground through its diet are stored and utilized in the skeletal system just like a doe. During the annual regeneration of antlers in spring, those same minerals are tapped into in order to begin the antler growing process. If a buck, young or old, suffers from a poor diet and has minimal mineral stored, antler growth will be negatively impacted. This is exactly why you'll find such small racks in areas of Pennsylvania mountain country where endless acres of nothing but mature forest exists. The deer simply aren't getting enough mineral to satisfy both the internal skeletal system and the mineral exhausting process that antler growth demands. Fortunately for the deer, the skeletal system trumps antler regeneration. Now, shift gears to the agricultural areas found elsewhere where the forest is complemented by rolling farmland and you have a recipe for success. Fertility in the ground allows for the easy transfer of nutrients and minerals from soil to plant, and of course naturally, to the wildlife. As deer begin to reach skeletal maturity, more mineral is readily available for antler growth. Across the northern tier, deer are at a disadvantage. Each fall, the massive canopy of colorful leaves come down, and over time, those leaves break down. After years and years of leaf drop decomposition, the soil pH has nowhere to go but down, and minerals remain trapped in the soil at the molecular level. Soil amendments help free up those minerals and allow food plots to flourish. But, what if you can't plant food plots? Well, this is where mineral supplementation becomes so critical. Establishing a mineral site on your property can have the same drawing power as an ice cream truck has on a group of kids at a playground in July. The only thing to pay attention to are those kids getting cheap flavored water or rich creamy ice cream with high quality ingredients. Now you might say to yourself, why do I say that? Well, because when it comes to minerals, not all are created equal. By definition, salt is a mineral and it's also extremely cheap. Take a look at the guaranteed analysis on the back of various mineral supplements on the market today and you'll notice that salt is a significant ingredient. In some cases, it's just about the only ingredient. Now, knowing that a hardened antler is made up of 55% mineral and far less than 1% salt, I ask you this. What benefit might salt have on antler growth? Well, it does about as much good as a flintlock without the flint. You may as well just leave it on the shelf because it won't serve you much good in practical use. 
Deer are naturally attracted to salt, given their inherent need for sodium. At the cellular level, deer require potassium and sodium in appropriate balance in order to maintain normal body function. Through spring and summer, vegetation normally found in abundance is very high in potassium, but low in sodium. Therefore, deer are overloaded with potassium and seek out sodium wherever it can be found. One quick stroll through the aisles at your outdoor store and you'll quickly notice a myriad of products touting their power for producing the biggest racks known to man. Understand that there is a difference between legitimate mineral supplements and simple attractants. Within that same breath, there is also a significant difference within the category of legitimate mineral supplements. I know, it's so easy to just say, you know what, the heck with it, and not even deal with any of it. But believe me, it is well worth your time and money. So stay with us and we'll navigate through the marketing noise. Products on the market with high sodium content will fill the void deer have and you'll get that warm fuzzy feeling when you see all these pictures of whitetail on your trail cameras. But come fall, you might begin to lose faith in the proclamations on the bag that promise monster racks. Why? Well, because salt plays virtually no role in antler growth. A true mineral supplement has higher concentrations of antler building minerals like calcium, magnesium, and phosphorus, and less of the cheaper ingredients like sodium and other fillers. Anything with more than say 50 to 60% salt is more or less just an attractant, not an antler building supplement. Now some companies like Marvo Minerals, makers of Lucky Buck, offer a money back guarantee if you're not completely satisfied. This stand behind your product marketing campaign can be very reassuring, though a quick glance on the back of the bucket reveals a salt content that's a little high, it's about 65%. I will say that we used Lucky Buck for years and it proved to be quite the calling card for our deer herd. We have literally tens of thousands of video clips of deer hitting those mineral licks year after year. And yes, antler size did seem to increase, but you can't help but wonder what just a little bit less salt and a few more beneficial minerals could have done all that time. So I went straight to Lucky Buck and I asked the president of the company, David Wheeler, about his company's guarantee. I was told this, as far as our product goes, it will do what it is guaranteed to do. We have been selling Lucky Buck for over 12 years and have paid back on the guarantee to 15 different customers. Our sales have continued to grow at the rate of 30 to 40% for the last five years with very little advertising. Clearly, the product does work. It truly does draw deer. But where does it stand in the attracting versus supplement debate? For this episode, we did some significant research that included dozens of products currently on the market that claim to increase antler size. We'll discuss some of those conclusions in a few minutes so that you can make an educated decision on the product or products that would work in your situation. But for now, let's talk a little bit about site selection, establishment, and maintenance. Once you've decided on a mineral product, your next step is selecting the right spot on your property to unveil it. Site selection isn't so much a science as it is trial and error, but we all know how finicky deer can be. Naturally, they aren't going to feel safe working a mineral site in the middle of an open field. At the same time, you or I wouldn't want to go traipsing through a thicket to one either. So where's the middle ground? Well, think like a deer. You leave a bedding area and head for a feeding source. Along the way, you browse a few sweet spots here and there until the last light disappears below the western horizon. Set up a mineral site just off a well-worn travel quarter and you should see results in fairly short order, depending on the time of year. Establishing one is as easy as opening the package and spreading, pouring, or placing the mineral on the ground. Over time, deer will literally dig a hole in the ground where the mineral leaches into your soil. At that point though, you don't want to continue just dumping more mineral into the hole. Nobody wants to drink nasty salt water, and with summer rains, that's exactly what you'll have. 
Instead, find a significantly rotted tree stump and pour it on the stump and around the base. The bigger, the better. The stump will absorb the mineral and allow your site to thrive for years. We keep trail cameras on our mineral sites and maintain an activity log 365 days a year to track the ebb and flow of mineral usage at each site. In all of the years that we've been supplementing deer with minerals, oddly we found that 99% of our does feed from the stump only, while 99% of bucks feed strictly from the ground around the base of the stump. Mark Trudeau, Director of Certified Research for Whitetail Institute, recommends maintaining about a 10 square foot mineral site. Now the rationale behind this has to do with the pecking order of deer and creating an environment where more than a few deer at a time can utilize the site. Starting out in spring, just before the green up, you'll want to kick off a few sites with just 5 or 10 pounds of mineral at each site maybe one site for every 10 acres. Place a trail camera on them and see what kind of usage you're getting after a month. Now I say a month because it's hard to make any solid assessment after just a few days or even a week or two for that matter. So give it some time to see what locations your deer are favoring and narrow the sites down to the most popular ones. In contrast, now well established, we have one mineral site for every 30 acres on our property. Now in the absence of trail cameras, simply use general scouting skills to gauge each site's success. An abundance of tracks, or hair, or even droppings in the soil. Once you've determined which one or ones deer feel most comfortable using, you can focus on solidifying them.